This is Dan Gallagher, the CEO of Process for Growth Consulting. For the people who have seen me speak before and work with me, I'm all about net new assets and how to build a business model that allows you to gather these assets. So what's with the succession planning? Believe it or not, it's all about assets. The retail financial industry has an age problem. The average age of a at a BD financial advisor is 62. And the succession planning is now a skill set that retiring FAs must hone if we want to successfully transition our books and maximize their retirement payout. For firms and complexes, this is an important moment as about 55 to 65 percent of all their assets are up for grab in the next decade. This presentation is an attempt to discuss lessons learned in assisting three different teams at three different firms to the process of succession. There is no right way or best way, but there are certain factors that can determine a better outcome for both the retiring FA, the acquiring team or FA, and the firm complex. This presentation looks at all three sides of this transaction as everybody's success is contingent on a successful integration with their new partner. We will look at what branch managers can do to also facilitate this transaction. The presentation will cover the opportunity and the threats that are in play for a complex director, branch manager, retiring FA, and acquiring team. We will use perceived industry averages as PFGC doesn't have the exact breakdown, but I believe the averages are pretty standard for the major BDs. <clears throat> Obviously, you can get the exact data for each one of your own complexes. With a number of 40% of financial advisors, a huge number, it pales to the percentage of assets that's up for grabs. Also, we believe that wealth management is our future. We have work to do in basic training. Now, all these averages you can read, um, I think everyone knows them. And so I'm just going to go through them and you can just look at them. Here's our clients also by... Um, by age, and that doesn't bode well for us either. Looking at the industry, we have to deal in averages. And even though the presentation focuses on a major BD, I have found there's no difference with an RIA, except the RIA has let far less choices for the retiring FA and finding a partner. I've excluded taking a deal and moving firms. There is myriad of reasons for this, but the biggest is that the major BDs are not recruiting like the past, and the RIA deals have far less upfront money with an uncertain end game for cashing out. The major BDs have formulated impressive buyout plans, but like all deals, the caveat is that your book must produce for the retiring FA to get paid. But that said, the number of FAs retiring in the next couple of years make this opportunity for FA acquiring books unprecedented in the last 50 years and likely will never happen again. Today, we will work with the average sales force, the average clientele book. Our goal is not to have all the numbers exact, but to understand there's the best path forward. So if you're retiring FA, do you think having 15,500 potential partners or would you not or should you not consider FAs under five years experience? How about only teams? I believe we will be geographically constrained, even down to the office level as branch management teams do not want the assets and revenues leaving even to another office in the complex. Assessment of the landscape that you will have to operate in is the first thing to do on the to-do list. The average big BD has about 60 complexes, so each complex will be looking at between 30 and 40 uh, retiring FAs, Remember, 40% of the 15,000 is 6,200 retiring FAs or over 100 per complex. We need a plan. Now, the average book at a BD is, in my opinion, relatively large, and just the sheer size of the book must be considered as one of the biggest obstacles to success. We must be mindful that we already are running our own books, and I know very few, if any FAs, they have a lot of time on their hand. 
but many FAs cite the lack of organic growth because of time constraints of running their book, and that is contacting just a few people a year. This has implications for both sides of succession planning. The understanding the scale of an average book is important because we now know that an FA does not call 40% of their clients in the last 18 months. Think of why we now have all these um, email programs for us to automatically contact your clients. Once we found out the 40%, we put that right in, which is fine. But how does an FA contact 160 relationships and initiate a successful transition plan? Each relationship transition in all probability will be multiple meetings or phone calls. The average work year for us is around 200 days. Five times 160 is 800 contacts. Make it four contacts, make it three contacts. Daunting to say the least. FAs have commonality in that they get paid a fee for managing about 50% of their assets. But any standardization of the investment process is virtually non-existent for the vast majority of FAs. So book integration based on a standard must have a well thought out plan of integration. Since FAs do not grow net new assets, there's very little hope that a retiring FA's business will grow through the transition. The retiring FA will be extremely lucky if the book is maintained at current retirement levels. These numbers represent what I believe pretty close to the breakdown at major BDs, clientele by relationships, assets, and revenues. The exact numbers are considered prior, uh, proprietary, even though I believe all the firms within a small percentage of each other. We'll use these percentages as an overlay to the average FA's book of business so we can start defining the issues of integration for both the retiring FA and the, and the acquiring team or FA will face. Looks like the 80-20 rule is the reality, and this shows us our first problem. 20% of the relationships on average, or 32 relationships, will represent 80% of the assets and 70% of the revenues. Dividing the book by the 80-20 rule leaves a difficult path to success for the retiring FA. I believe that any acquiring team will be focused on the relationships over $1 million. Makes sense to me. Oh, it's what I would do. At 20% of the average book, there are average 160 relationships. The acquiring team is looking at transitioning 32 relationships to their book. The acquiring team, if 100% successful, which is just not happening, they will acquire 80% of the assets and 70% of the revenues. I think we can be confident that an acquiring team will focus on the top end of the book. And it's not just because of the 80-20 rule, but because of time constraints. I have shown these numbers to top teams at uh, top firms and none want the bottom 80%. And surprisingly, they didn't want their junior partners to work on the bottom 80% as it would clog up their support staff. PFGC coaches to a net new asset model. PFGC focuses on net new meetings and net new meetings are only the driving force of net new assets. I've observed anecdotally that it's extremely difficult for a team, let alone a sole producing FA, to have 15 net new relationships, net new meetings in a year with multiple meetings follow up. So even though we reduce the clientele by 80% to just 32, the most of the most important relationships, it is still a daunting process for the acquiring team. And I believe virtually an impossibility for a sole FA. As for the retiring FA, it is significant reduction in overall payout, 30%. That is without building into the numbers that the acquiring team could lose and probably will lose several of the top 32 relationships during the transition. So where the firms have stepped up with lucrative deals for the retiring FA, there remains a high degree of risk for all the parties involved. This is why it is my belief that a sole FA will rarely be the answer to the partner for retiring. 
the amount of work is overwhelming for a team and a soul FA, they just don't have the bandwidth. A retiring FA built their book, Relationships and Investment Portfolios, over decades of personal interaction with their clients. We know these relationships are real because as an industry, for years, we recruited FAs to move their books of business from one firm to the other. And for the most part, the vast majority of the FA's clientele would follow their FA. Relationships are real. But the skills that is needed from a retiring FA is one that is based upon a proactive transition plan that is driven by the retiring FA, not by the acquiring team. The main goal of retiring FA cannot be, I want all the revenue, but I will not spend the time and the effort to be the leader of the transition. The key for the retiring FA is to be the leader of the transition. The most important relationship is between the retiring FA and the leader or leaders of the acquiring team. They must map out, execute the integration plan that starts immediately after the agreement is signed, not two or three months before the targeted retirement date. There is a natural tension as there are different perceptions of what the appropriate goals for both the FAs and the best way to achieve these goals. The acquiring team wants and needs the new clients to be on their platform and is the only way for them to achieve economies of scale for the relationship ownership. The retiring FA wants his whole book to be integrated into the new team to maximize retirement revenue, but only upon their retirement. This is the dilemma. It is a problem and it's unworkable. And you can see here that there are different goals that the retiring and the acquiring FA or team has. And these must be talked about in advance if you want to be successful. So partnering is not new and passing on your book is not no, new either. But in today's world, we're facing challenges with our basic business model that is changing our investment process. How we add wealth management and not in the least how we manage larger and larger amounts of assets. It is also important that we at least try to define what is a good team, what are the attributes of a good team. The standardized investment philosophy is the foundation of a team's ability to scale, definable, repeatable, and scalable. It defies logic that a large book can effectively and efficiently be managed if everyone is invested differently. There are two major bottlenecks on each large team. First, if you have more than 350 to 400 relationships, answering the phone is an issue. Second, tax selling. How effective and efficient were large books during the last three weeks of 2018 with tax selling? That's something I think we should want to bet on if we're really good at all. Standardization doesn't solve the calls, but tax selling can be more effectively and efficiently executed with standardized investment policy using direct indexing. Large books need to demand a well thought out ongoing process or you lose control of your relationship, reacting instead of proactivity. Remember, we will in some cases be doubling the size of our team's book. Now, branch managers are aligned with the retiring FA, not the acquiring FA. The retiring FA wants all the assets and all the revenues to stay and produce and maximize their retirement agreement revenue. The acquiring FA, if the senior FA, will only go after the top 20% because of time constraints. Not because they don't want to, but because of time constraints. PFGC believes that the branch should focus large relationships with the senior FAs to ensure putting our best foot forward. But the senior FAs have to be trained to standardize processes of wealth management, investment management, have partnering experience prior to signing a retirement agreement. If it was me, I would divide the clientele into two groups, top 20 and the top and bottom 80%. The 80% I would assign to co-primaries. <coughs> with the leadership of the retiring FA to a designated group of trainees. The business development officer would require all assigned relationships to receive a presentation with the business officer would develop that would include investment review, financial plan, GPS, asset ag aggregation, and be incorporated into the pitch. We might as well hit all our numbers as we save the relationships. 
All FAs and VOLs will have to be monitored for success ratios. Whether you agree with PFGC's analysis or not, as a complex, one thing is true for all of us. We need a standardized process of engagement because of the sheer size of the section of succession planning scenario and the amount of FAs re uh, retiring. Any plan is better than no plan. Now, the retiring FA must be the leader of the transition if they want to maximize their retirement revenue. But every situation is different. It has become obvious that retirement is a difficult process with an uncertain end game. Most FAs have a very loose definition of retirement date or are not ready to commit. Branch management must engage the retiring FA and review the numbers and level of difficulty that we all face in this process. In working with the retiring FAs, I can assure you that most, if not all, do not want, do not know the numbers, the difficult tasks they face, and have a prepared plan to meet these challenges, yet all want to maximize their revenues. This natural tension can be addressed to a thorough discussion of the numbers. I have had these discussions and retiring FAs are very receptive to a solution that assists them in the transition. The most important function of the retiring FA is picking and assigning and introducing the co-primaries to their relationships. The retiring FA must realize that this is a time-intensive process that they cannot be held off to the moment they decide to retire if they want to maximize their payout. My opinion is that your transition process takes at least a year and to a year and a half on an average book. Larger books, even more time is needed. To succeed as the retiring FA, you must be the leader. Just like the firms have requirement for stock plan teams, international FAs, 401k teams, and ultra high net worth teams, we must have a standard required for an acquiring team. This is not to say the retiring FA cannot assist in picking the acquiring team but is saying that all the complexes acquiring teams have to have a base competency to participate. It is too important for us as a management team not to have requirements. Teams are running their own books, and I've never seen or heard an FA speak of it all the time they have. Standardization increases the success, the success of retiring FA, their acquiring FAs, and branch managers. The acquiring FA will concentrate on the top 20%. You show a team that you consider as a prime candidate to acquire the book, this presentation, as I have, this is the answer you will get. I will never call the bottom 20%. And I don't even want my trainees and my team to call them as these accounts will overwhelm my support staff. The reality is we must assist both sides of this transition to ensure success. Standardization and tiering of the relationship to the appropriate FAs, or as we call them, co-primaries. We must start there st somewhere, start with ourselves. Management has a stake in the successful transition of the retiring FA. If we fail to successfully transition, the first wave of our retirees, the following ways will view leaving the firm for a deal as the preferred option. This cannot happen. There is a saying, he who defines the terms wins the argument. By defining the terms, we can begin engagement. In talking through the terms of engagement, <coughs> we can ask the FAs, what do you believe is the best path forward? What do you believe is the best team for you to maximize your retirement package? As an acquiring team, do you want all the relationships? If so, how do you propose to address 160 relationships? Find out the percentage of the acquiring team's clients that have not been contacted in the last 12 to 18 months. Ask retiring FAs, do you want to maximize your retirement revenue? If so, how do you propose to uh, proceed? Every journey begins with one step, take the first step today. Then when you go through this process, I work with both sides, all three sides of the team, the complex. I also work with the acquiring and also the retiring FA. All three are very important 
in making a decision on what we do next. So this is Dan Gallagher with Process for Growth. Please feel free to reach out with any questions you may have.